They say that hoflation is when a man today needs to work 20 times harder than his grandfather to get a girl 20 times worse than his grandmother. But nobody is talking about chadflation. Chadflation is when men today need to work 20 times harder to be just 20% of the man their grandfather was. It appears today we need to do more work than ever and have less time than ever and we still don't hit the milestones of success that our grandfathers and fathers did. Finding a wife and actually having kids, owning a house, going on vacation every year comfortably. These things were considered average as recently as the 90s. In just 30 years, everything has changed. Certainly there is a political and economic angle to all this and I will cover that in future videos. But today we are going to talk about the biologic and genetic competition. The chief tenet of the religion of the red pill is that male life is relentless competition. That if you aren't obsessing over the holy trinity of looks, money and status, then you are worthless. But is this true? Is competition really everything? Let's look to nature. Let's take a rose plant and let it grow in a pot with plenty of sunshine, water and soil. Let's take a second rose plant that is genetically identical to the first one and put it in a pot alongside three other rose plants. Which one do you think will grow taller? Which one do you think will produce more flowers? Which one do you think will have bigger leaves? Which one do you think will have sharper thorns? The answer is obvious. The plant that has no competition, the plant that has space to grow and hone the full use of its powers, the plant that doesn't have to fight for every scrap of nutrition, that's the plant that's going to win out. The rose plant that avoided brutal competition for resources was the one with more beauty and indeed sexual power in the form of bigger flowers. Not only that, but it also has sharper thorns by which it can defend itself. In other words, it's a superior specimen. But we're told that competition is always good. Red pill nerds will often use evolutionary biology to make their points without understanding what they're speaking of. They claim that the purpose of life is reproduction and that looks, money and status are proxies for reproductive success. And since the purpose of life is nothing more than just reproduction, LMS is an indicator of self-worth. Again, let's look to nature. What happens when you take noble creature like Bengal tiger or snow leopard of Tibet, great elk of the Rocky Mountains or the gray wolves of Germania and you put them into an artificial habitat. You can give them everything they could possibly desire, limitless food, complete protection from predators. You can give them medical care, you can give them new mates, but you don't have reproduction. Noble animals do not reproduce in captivity. Any form of higher life is stunted when it lives in owned space. Even mice stop reproducing in captivity as we see in the mouse utopia experiments. And we're told that reproduction is the purpose of life. But it's clear from these observations and more that we're missing something. Let's look at humans in South Korea. They have food, they have water, they have shelter, they have medicine, they have technology. They have all the material means to reproduce. But they're well on the way to extinction. We're in a bizarre situation where North Korea and South Korea have the same birth rate despite radically different material possessions. Again, I thought reproduction was the prime driver of life. Is this not true? These are observations that are plain to see and you do not need to study biology for six years to understand that we have a cultural misunderstanding of what life is for and what competition does to the individual. Life under relentless zero-sum competition does not produce beauty in form or function. I'm telling you all this because mindset matters. Your internal monologue determines your overall mental state. Your interpretation of life determines your stress response. Your understanding of the purpose of life shapes your decision making. This is not an abstract philosophy video. This is tied to your life in the here and now. Obviously, a certain amount of competition in a narrow domain of life can be a driver towards excellence. I'm not going to insult your intelligence by going on about how competition can be good in sports or business. You're smart enough to know that. It's a matter of the dose makes the poison. My central point is, if you believe yourself to be a rat in a rat race, then you are going to have rat biology. You're going to have the hormonal and neuronal frameworks of a rat, a prey animal. You're going to live in a scarcity mindset, always unsure of a advancement, always skittish, always asking for permission. 
We live in the anxious generation, responding to the pressures of our environment and this fear of missing out. This constant longing for being respected. This is the biology of the nerd, the office clerk and the peon. There's two ways the mindset of man splits. Version 1 that we just discussed is the rat mentality, which is basically 1. I'm in competition with all other men for resources and women. And 2. My self-worth is determined by how others see me in comparison to themselves. Version 2, what I want to ascribe to, is the lion mentality, which is, I am an end unto myself. I will take life in my jaws. And 2, my self-worth is determined by how I see myself in comparison to my innate potential. Both these versions can absolutely work brutally hard on themselves and gain success, but there is a difference in the outcome. Rat mentality man will always struggle to find self-worth and will spend his life looking for self-worth inside his bank balance or between the legs of women. While lion mentality men is on a different quest. He's on a quest not for self-worth but rather on a search for deeper meaning and the unique expression of his divine talents. This is a noble life quest and results in the building of true legacy. Even when it comes to dating, what kind of man sees dating as brutal competition? It's not the man who gets girls easily. The carefree man, the man who is self-assured, he sees himself as above the competition and has the competitive advantage. This is ironic, but it's true. I've experienced this myself and I'm sure you've seen it play out that a man only gets women when he stops obsessing over them. The whole red pill slash pickup artist space is dominated by guys who weren't good with women when they were young, so they had to develop these complicated philosophies and doctrines by which to unlock some pussy. The success of this movement is dubious because even when they succeed, they fail. Their self-worth is determined by how well they can compete for pussy. And since no matter how good a man's game is or how much looks maxing he does, it's not going to work on every single woman. And this chips away at his self-worth and also his perception of women. He's no longer able to enjoy relationships because in his mind he's always anxious. Always thinking about how the next guy is going to steal his girl away because he stopped playing a fake persona or stopped using the perfect dialogues and tone of voice and all this fake stuff. The guys I know in real life who are genuinely successful with women to the point of actually getting married and planning kids don't think like this. They aren't obsessed about hypergamy and monkey branching or any of these dark concepts. They focus on their mission, they focus on their fitness, and they focus on their community. Girls can't get enough of guys like this. And by the way, I uh, recently opened up one-on-one -on -one coaching. It's a temporary offer, so if you want my help in strategy or testosterone optimization, the link for scheduling is in the description. Peter Thiel, one of the greatest technology entrepreneurs of our generation, on par with Elon Musk, said that competition is for losers. What did he mean by this? His main point was that businesses that find a way to provide value in a unique way will outperform businesses that are in the blob of the competitive market. Only a business that has freed itself from the day-to-day -day competition can have a genuine long-term vision and can afford to place bets on projects that will bear fruit in decades rather than months. Is this not true of us as men? If you have true faith in your innate ability, then you owe it to yourself to see yourself as higher than the steaming rat pile of competition. You rise above the swarming masses who sacrifice everything to get a few more points on their exams or lie on their resume to get the job. You need to find your own unique competitive advantage and free yourself from the psychological snare that society and even your parents might trap you in. Now the response to this is, well, not everybody has that high level of innate potential. And that is true. But here's the thing. Only a very specific type of man or woman can watch this kind of video. This is a niche channel with a narrow appeal. The topics I choose, the vocabulary I use, the aesthetics only appeal to a certain type of person that I care about communicating with. This focus gives me a very valuable audience. From a business perspective, it's nice because I can make a good income without fame. But more importantly, I can confidently say that every man or woman watching this is guaranteed to be a person of high potential. It's math mathematically impossible for this to be otherwise. For high potential folk, competition is only a tool and it can only be used to an extent. Competition is amazing if you're okay with failure. Remember, 
Failure is an event, not a person. If you can remember this, then competition becomes nothing more than a tool to hone your skills. I'm not against competition as such, just that I believe that having an anti-fragile psyche comes first. In fact, this is actually part one of a two-part series. The next video, I'm going to share with you a tool called the Eudaimonic Compass. This tool helps you make decisions with confidence and follow through with conviction. This is important because we all make choices, but in the end, our choices make us. So I'll have the thumbnail pop up so you can watch part two and complete your knowledge and have access to the actionable steps.